Um, well, the, the, the story starts with uh, oxygen. And a lot of people uh, understand that oxygen is very important for, for health. Even doctors realize that. Um, but they don't know why. <laughs> Uh, oxygen is an interesting molecule. An oxygen, oxygen molecule can receive electrons. It's be called um, reducing the oxygen. It also can oxidize other things by taking electrons away. That's why it's called an, elect, uh, an oxidant. And when it, be, it uh, grabs an electron, it becomes new a new uh, thing. Oxygen, when it grabs an extra electron, becomes a superoxide anion. It grabs another one, it becomes a peroxide ion, like hydrogen peroxide. And then it grabs more and it becomes uh, more and more uh, active in that area. It also becomes more reduced. And the most reduced form of uh, oxygen is water. And, uh, you know, oxygen is a major component in water. And the bonds that create, that um, um, exist there. Are important. There's a trillion billion of these molecules in just one drop of water. Uh, so there's a lot of oxygen, and the water also forms clusters. And the clusters then uh, um, also have biological impact inside the cells. And so, you know, as we're developing uh, biology, we start realizing that we are made out of a bunch of tissues. And those tissues are made of interconnected cells. And then these uh, cells have all sorts of things happening, uh, just a metropolis of activity inside from complex molecules that are connected and orchestrated, and um, they're all connected through the saltwater medium. Everything in biochemistry takes place in salt and water. And the salt and water also becomes oxidized and reduced. It re um, and that's what they call redox, reduction oxidation technologies. And it, it causes all of the th things inside the cell to work. And um, so uh, it the cell helps to communicate and coordinate all of these very diverse activities inside by using uh, oxidation of oxygen or salt water, which also includes some other things that are like hypochlorites and, um, and such. Uh, most of these are produced by, while the, the metabolism is, is producing sugar and uh, creating superoxides and such. And uh, these are being created by the mitochondria, and then they're being eliminated by the antioxidants. Uh, inside the cell, there, there's a continual process of creation and elimination of these redox signaling molecules. Some of you have seen this before. And uh, the, that's wonderful because they're, the mitochondria is producing energy. It's also producing these things. And it's keeping in a homeostatic balance all of the oxidation inside the cell until the cell gets damaged. Then the cell starts to smoke, send up smoke signals where the oxidants and free radicals go crazy. And this is a, sen uh, um, a signal that something is wrong inside your body, like inflammation or immune disorders, or uh, whatever it happens. Uh, this signals the genes then to take their stance to get, to get ready and to, um, to fix the problem and or kill the cell. And uh, the cell, when it, it dies, it's a program death, is replaced by the neighboring cells that are healthy. And, and uh, this is the way that the body heals itself. And so when you, you, you can see that when I saw that we were able to produce these redox signaling messengers outside the body that can um, directly stimulate the, the processes inside the, the cell to let the cell repair and replace damaged um, uh, tissue. It was incredible. This had, this had been impossible in the past. And I still, at that early age, thought it was, was impossible until we started to see the results that we did in the clinical in, environment and, and also uh, around the world. So uh, James Watson now is one of the champions. He, he uh, was the one that, that saw what, or helped this discover what the structure of DNA is. Right now, he is in New York, by the way. It's sunny, sunny up there. And, um, and he is uh, spending the rest of his life 
seeing what these uh, reactive oxygen species or redox signaling molecules do in the inside the body and seeing how, how we can um, produce them inside the body. So this is not a, a you know a, a behind the scenes type of science. This is actually in front sort of things. Many have in the cell signaling process um, discovered what redox signaling does. Uh, one of the, one of them and and many of them I should say have earned uh, Nobel prizes and written books. Done absolutely wonderful work in science uh, on this on this technology. So there there's the lead up. Uh, and I hope that it didn't take too long. <laughs> um, the antioxidant uh, myth is that oxidants are bad and antioxidants are good and you only can get them from vegetables. That's not true. Both antioxidants and oxidants are produced inside your body and are necessary uh, com companions in, for, for the uh, healthy working uh, processes inside your body. And many oxidative therapies today are becoming very popular, you know, like these, um, the oxygen tents and the ozone therapy and hydrogen peroxide and the ways that we stimulate through light and um, electromagnetic radiation, oxidative processes in, inside of our body. All of these have to do with the redox signaling process. So they're trying to stimulate and create the, the redox signaling inside the body that will um, heal damaged tissue. So I am gonna go through a little bit this quickly, but we found that the oxidants are very critical in the regrowth of tissue. This is a tadpole. You cut the tail off a tadpole and it regrows. The reds and oranges and the, the, the uh, yellows are actually the redox signaling messengers, the oxidants that are inside the, um, the tissue. They're able to use fluorescent markers to, to show what it is. Notice in the regeneration of the tail, the oxidants are very critical um, there. Uh, in fact, without that, they, what they did also is they took a, uh, antioxidants and got rid of the oxidants for the regeneration process, and the tail did not regenerate. So the oxidation, the redox signaling molecules were absolutely essential in the regeneration of, of tissue. and um, and the uh, redox signaling molecules inside of uh, CIA, actually, I'm going to go through this a little bit, are uh, able to replenish the same type of redox signaling molecules that are inside healthy living cells and, um, and that are produced in there in a way that has never been possible before, uh, you know, through drinking it. And so we asked, well, what will these uh, redox signaling molecules do? Are they safe? The 16 years of studies that I mentioned before said they're absolutely safe. They're biocompatible, they're bioactive. Um, they increase antioxidant efficacies. Uh, they increase the NRF2. Um, and this is important because we just prove, have proven through our gene studies that uh, NRF2 is one of the, in one of the pathways of the genes, the increased production of NRF2, which produces antioxidants and, and defense genes. And it also does a lot of the things that we've seen in the gene study, for, for example, it, it helps to activate the innate, innate immune system and uh, reduce inflammation and in the, and the muscular and the, the vascular health also helps to renew the endothelium or the, size, the cells inside the blood vessels. And uh, one thing that I didn't know it from the gene study that I didn't predict was that it also helps to the, in the production of digestive enzymes in the digestive system. Um, and it speeds up regeneration of skin cells and oxidation of tissues. And uh, these, these things that we, that we have seen. And uh, it, besides that, it kills all the mi microbes. It's perfectly safe. It can go in your eyes, ears, your nose, your mouth. You can put it in any tissue. You can put it inside, outside, yourself in any amount and it's safe and it, then it, but it kills bacteria so the bacteria that are the that are pathogenic the, the bad guys uh, it kills and it has no effect on the on the healthy bacteria and we've done several studies on that uh, cell cultures uh, you know we uh, found that it an increased antioxidant efficacies you know incredible amounts in cell cultures 
increased uh, sensitivity to hormones. That's another one that we've proven out in the gene study. Uh, it increases, it uh, reverses cell aging, cells that were aging and irresponsive, unresponsive, excuse me, uh, all of a sudden became responsive and uh, new when we put it to see in these cell cultures. It opens the, these uh, keep ch one channels, which are also part of the genetic pathways that, that, are, that we have, have uh, studied. It opens detoxification channels in the gut and uh, stimulates antioxidant uh, production and, it, and it's key to regeneration cycles of the cell. Um, so we, we, we found that this is just almost a universal heal it thing. <laughs> Uh, if you want, if you want to be, you know, a little bit less technical, uh, where where it, it where it is exposed, it, it tends to in, accelerate the healing process of the, of the cells, uh, and it also helps to enhance the energy utilization in animals. You know, mice were shown to to run twenty nine percent longer when they were given a sea. Uh, the human met metabolism also. And uh, go shifts in metabolites that last longer than 24 hours. Again, this was a study that was done about three or four years ago. Um, and then uh, there are several theories as of why it is working and why it's doing this, and we're still discussing. <laughs> the, the science is just at the, it's barely, it's at the barely beginning of, of, of understanding this. And uh, then the thousands of cases that have been reported and for positive benefits. The benefits for skin, of course, skin, when it becomes damaged, is very visible. And so the reduction in blockness, splotches, smoothness, texture, and hydration are very uh, um, obvious. You know, you don't have to be a scientist to see, see the uh, effects of this. <laughs> But they did use very good uh, analysis and, and um, three-dimensional mapping of skin texture and stuff to, to, uh, by lasers to, um, to analyze this in order to, to get these results. It increases the blood flow. It decreases uh, the cellulite uh, fat globules. And then it increases the rate of cellular regeneration. Uh, cardiovascular research, we already knew that it would be incredible for the cardiovascular system. The genetic research said that it stimulates the EGR1 uh, gene that helps to renovate the inside of the veins, these endothelial cells that we were talking about before. And so uh, very, very exciting that we're actually, uh, in several cases, when we have sugar problems in the blood, these, these uh, very uh, veins are destroyed and it, it, it degrades our nervous system, degrades our cardiovascular system. There are over 5,000 mitochondria in, in every cell of the heart, four to 5,000. And they're producing these things because the heart can't stop and repair itself. Um, so it, the, the uh, endocrine research that has gone on also, uh, the skin research, lung research long before, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Malmed was on there. We saw the most incredible things on the on the regeneration of lung tissue in um, in animals. We we can't talk about it because uh, this was uh, these were this was early research before we began technology. Uh, digestive system research it, it helps the, these digestive system to replace cells. Of course, cell signaling is important in the nervous system, and it, it, it aids there. It's safe and applicable to, to everything. And so, so now, uh, recently, I was, I was going to um, say, um, you know, a little bit about the genetic research. We found, we found that, they are, that there are five genes that we've been able to determine. Genetic research is very difficult because there's, there's thousands and tens of thousands of genes, and they're moving all over the place, and it's difficult to see which ones, you know, to actually find a difference in, in uh, the noise but they, we did and they were some of the most important signaling genes that are exist in our body and so you can imagine uh, you know how excited i am now i'm just kind of sitting on the sidelines i'm doing uh, other things um i've written a book now about it a new book um and uh, it's being released uh in next month um, and so I'm still very excited and um, involved in, in the science. Uh, 
still and uh, very, but I'm almost more excited in seeing you know what's happening in the field with, with you guys. Okay.